Okay. Do we have announcements for fellowships? Wala. Elton. Okay. So we'd like to remind everyone um, the seniors meet every Tuesday. Monday. Monday. <laughs> seniors meet every Monday. The men and women meet every Friday. And the youth meet every Saturday. Okay? So, ang mga young adults, pinagpe-pray pa namon na tani makagather si Laliwat. So, let's leave that to the Lord. But, um, we are encouraging everyone that, um, you know, Sunday is not enough. No? And, um, assuming that all of us pray and read every day, it is important for us to fellowship with other believers no? and to grow in the Word and in the Lord. So, uh, we pray na maka-attend ka mo sa amon nga fellowships. Okay? And I'd, look, I'd also like to announce that if there is anyone who would like to be discipled, if there's anyone who would like to start a Bible study in their homes or maybe even in your office, uh, just get in touch with us and we will, we will assign someone to take care of that need of yours. Okay? So we are, we are really hoping and praying that um, during the week, uh, we are continually growing and learning from the Word no? and knowing the Lord more. So um, I pray that uh, you, will give, you will keep uh, in touch with us with regards to that area. Okay. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 13, verses uh, 16 to 30. Uh, we'd, we'd also like to announce no, that um, although we, we do not have the capacity to do live stream yet, but we are recording our morning service. And um, by, by early afternoon, uh, available siya sa YouTube. So just in case na gusto nyo mag, gusto nyo i-share o maglantaw liwat sang sermon, uh, available siya sa YouTube. No? Kag sa aton ka website man, no? So, um, I'd I, I just like to remind you of that. Okay. So, we are, today we are in John chapter 13, verses 16 to 30. Okay. Let's all stand as we read and honor God's word for today. John 13, verses 16 to 30. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I am not referring to all of you. I know those I have chosen, but this is to fulfill the scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I am telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am he. I tell you the truth, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and asked, and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. What you are about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out. And it was night. Okay. Father, bless your word for today. As always, Holy Spirit, we are trusting that you are ministering to us in our hearts. It is you, Lord, who gives us the light to know you more and to understand your word. It is also you, Lord, who are the light 
who, or who is the light who opens the heart of those who are not yet born again but need to know who you are, Lord, and what you ask from us as your disciples. And so we entrust this word unto you, Lord, for your glory and for your honor. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, we can have our seats, brethren. John 13, all the way up to John 17, is the portion of John's gospel where he records the moments that the Lord has with his disciples before he is finally captured and sent to death. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to die and to give his life for our salvation, for the salvation of his disciples. Take a look again at verse 1, brethren, John 13, verse 1. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. It was not a coincidence that Jesus was slaughtered during the Passover feast because the Passover was a celebration of how Jesus passed over death, now, passed over the people of Israel, saving them from death. And the only way that they were saved was if each family took a lamb and slaughtered it and the blood placed on the doorposts of their homes. So when the angel of death saw the blood, it passed over the home. If you were here for our worship, that is who we sang to this morning. We sang to the Lamb of God who died for the sins of the world. No? Amen to that. I do not know, only God knows, of course, as we have been seeing in John, those of us who actually believe that, that he is the lamb that was slain for our sins. There is no other sacrifice. There is no other payment for our sins. If we are trusting in any other sacrifice, or any other effort apart from the sacrifice of Christ, we are not saved. Because we are saved only by the blood of the Lamb. So the Old Testament, this was a picture of what Jesus would do. See? So during that time, the Exodus, if there was anyone who did not follow that command and did not kill a lamb and put blood on the doorpost, when death came, their firstborn would have died. See? So it was by faith. Even in the Old Testament, it was still by faith. And they were looking forward to the Messiah. Kita subong, brethren, the Messiah has already come 2,000 plus years ago. Today, the gospel says, look back at who Jesus is. Look back at what he did and put your faith in him so that we may be saved. See, that is the good news. That is the gospel. Jesus knew the time had come for him to leave this world. Verse 3 of John 13. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and he was now returning to God. So, amon ang focus ni Jesus. He was now preparing himself to die, to suffer, to die, and then on the third day, rise again, and then eventually he would return to the right hand of the Father only after he showed them the full extent of his love for us. Only after. 
So what does Jesus do? This is what we saw last Sunday. Okay, verse 4. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. We have a picture of a servant. Not just a picture. We see Jesus actually serving his disciples in the worst way. And what was that? By washing their feet. Okay. And what was all this about? Okay. The explanation, of course, comes from Jesus himself. So verse 12. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. And then he said, Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now look at verse 14. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. So Jesus said, I have set you, verse 15, an example okay, that you should, okay? Anong meaning sa word na should? Okay? It's not a choice. It's not an option, Okay? All of this is based on a person's understanding of who Jesus is. This is not about religion. This is not about forcing ourselves to, to serve or to wash people's feet. In the, this is founded on how they knew Jesus. That's why Jesus said, so verse 13, You call me teacher and Lord. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should okay, wash one another's feet. This is not about a church or church leaders forcing you to serve. This is not about forcing yourself to, to bow down to others and to help them and to take care of them. No, this is, this is about your recognizing who Jesus is in your life. If he is your teacher, rabbi, okay, a position of authority, if he is your Lord, okay, how did Jesus wash our feet? Because we were not there in the Last Supper. How did Jesus wash our feet? By being our servant. He was the servant of God, the Messiah, the Son of God. Do you know that the Son of God existed even before eternity? The Son of God was not born when He came out of Mary's womb. That was the human Messiah that was born. The Son of God existed ever since time began. Okay? He was already there. He was already God. And when it came time for him to become man, so that after 33 years, he would be crucified and killed for our sins, you know what the Son of God did? He obeyed. He followed. And his death is washing our feet. Do you know that? He did, it was the servant washing our He did not have to do it. All of us could have just gone to hell. Pero ginatag niya ang iyang kabuhi para sa aton. If this is what Jesus did for us, if you recognize that in your heart, you trust Him and believe in Him as your Savior. You know what Jesus said? Kung tuod gid na nagapati ka, you should also wash one another's feet. It's not something you pray for. It's not something it, it, that is an option. No. It, it's, it's an outcome of how you know Jesus in your life. Je Jesus did not come to be served. He came to serve. And now, you know what Jesus is doing, brethren? Because he is leaving 
and going back to the Father, He is now preparing His disciples for one another. Makikita mo na eh, one another. If I was your example, if I was your teacher and Lord, verse 14, then you should also wash one another's feet. Okay? See? This is why, brethren, you see, this is amoni ang church life. Eh. Through, throughout the years, no? ginguba sang tawo ang church life. Paano? Ang church, Sunday. Di ba? Ma-attend lang ta, okay na. Naka-attend ko church. Uh, di ba lang? Okay na ta sa Sunday. No. It's not. Church is about being the body of Christ. All those whom God has saved, fellowshipping, coming together, and we washing one another's feet. Okay? You see? Do you notice how time has destroyed the concept of the body of Christ that, that God desired it to be? That is why there are fellowships. That's why we seek to, to spend time with other believers. That is why we pray, Lord, how can I serve? How can I wash other people's feet? What can I do, Lord, para sa, sa imong body, sa mga fellow believers? Why? Because, Lord, if you did this for me, then I should be doing this for others. See? So, ang Bible, which was the correct start, ginaguba niya ang tradition eh. You notice that? Even up to today, many of us still make that mistake of saying, I'm going to church. Di ba? Sunday subong. Oh, hindi ka makanto. Kanto ko sa church because we look at the church as a church service. No, the church is people. Brethren, the church is people, fellow believers, those who Jesus washed, we are also to wash one another's feet. Jesus was leaving them an example for us to follow. Diba? Can you imagine if Jesus came tomorrow and he would ask us, Te kumusta ang pagwash mo sa feet sa iban? Ano kaya ang sabat naton? Okay? See? He's not going to say, I gave you the option. No, I said you should be washing one another's feet. You should. Okay? Jesus was going to leave his disciples with one another. He left them an example of servanthood. Okay? And I did not mention this in the morning service. Na mentioned ko sa afternoon service. Look at the depth of the servanthood of Jesus. You know how you know that? Was Judas part of the twelve during that time? Hindi pa siya naglakat eh. Di ba? Hindi pa siya naglakat. Did Jesus wash Judas' feet? Yes. It does not mean he was saved. Because Jesus said, not all of you are clean. But even Judas... He washed his feet. Diba? Te kita, ginapili naton eh. Kung kay sino nga tiil ang hugasan naton eh. Ang iban sa aton, hindi pa ta nagapili. Hindi naton gusto maghugas ang tiil sa iban. Diba? Have you noticed how in the church, one of the reasons that there are conflicts is because church members expect others to serve them. And when others do not serve them, gasunggod kita. Okay. Nga, ah, hindi ako pinapansin. Nga, hindi ako gina-follow up. Nga, hindi ako gina-amuni-amuna. Nga, ang ngalan ko, hindi na-mention sa announcement. Nga, si ako, 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 ako. Nga, di ba? Grabe, no? You know what Jesus is saying? Stop focusing on yourself. This is not about you. This is about you washing other people's feet. Do you know that a servant was unknown? Okay? He was not lifted up. He was not glorified. He was not praised. He was just a servant. You know what Jesus said? In the church, each one of us should be servants. Yes, we have titles. Amo na problema sa title eh. Pastor, ministry head, di ba? elder, deacon. May mga titles. But they're just titles. Here, Jesus is making it clear. We are supposed to be serving one another. Look at verse 16. I tell you the truth. 
No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Two descriptions of the disciples here. Number one, servant. So no servant is greater than his master. If your master washed your feet, then you should wash one another's feet. Amunang point sina. Pero ikadua, the Lord called them messengers. The messenger is not greater than the one who sent him. See, why was Jesus preparing their hearts? Because these apostles were going to be sent. Okay? In other versions, it says, neither is the one who is sent greater than the one who sends him. And it's not just about the apostles. Every Christian is sent. And how does God prepare us to be those who are sent through our character? Okay? And it's not just about serving. Huh? Again, related siya sa aton nga relasyon sa Diyos. Eh. If we recognize Him as Lord and Master and Teacher, when we wash one another's feet, that's what people will see. Ay, nag siya sa iya nga master. They're not going to see our servanthood. They're going to see our obedience. Obedience to who? Obedience to our pastor. He said, Lord, because you washed my feet, then I will wash other people's feet. People are not, we, we are not supposed to say, Oy, grabe, mag-serve si brother Amuni, o oh, oh, si sister Amuna, grabe, kalpisan sa iya, no? Napaka-diligent na worker, grabe. No, what we're supposed to see is, look at him or her, follow his master. See? Jesus wants us to follow him, not to exalt ourselves, and that's what a true disciple is. You see, brethren, if we have truly sensed and experienced this washing of faith that the Lord did for us, natural lang na i pasa natin sa iba ne, di ba? Natural lang. And because we are His messengers, look at verse twenty. Look what Jesus tells them. Jesus tells them, I tell you the truth. Whoever accepts anyone I send okay, accepts me. Okay. Do you know how, how um, I don't want to use the word confident, eh, no man. but, but it, it looks like that. Eh. How confident is the Lord to send us? Okay. Knowing that those He sent are following their master. See, whoever accepts anyone I send, accepts me. You see, when God sends us, what is going to happen? What's going to happen is people are going to hear Jesus' message and they're going to see Jesus' life. Okay? One more time. Ang mga ginasend ni Lord they're going to hear the same message as Jesus preached and they're also going to see the life of Jesus in those He sends. That's why whoever accepts those I send will accept me. And whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. See? So notice how essential this was, brethren. For the church. And, and of course, I'm praying that, that the Holy Spirit will eventually speak to each one of us. Na hindi kita satisfied sa Sunday na lang. Na hindi kita satisfied na kita lang ang aton ka focus. Okay? That we need to understand that God was preparing the disciples for one another. Okay? And not just for themselves. Have you noticed how Christianity today is so self-centered, di ba? Lord, what can you do for me? Anong mahimo mo, Lord, para sa akin? Paano mo ko i-bless, Lord? Paano maging maayong ako nga kabuhi dire? But we're not thinking of washing other people's feet. Okay? We're not following Jesus. 
Because Jesus washed feet. What we should be always praying for is, Lord, give me an opportunity to serve. Give me an opportunity to wash other believers' feet, Lord. And even if it has to be a Judas, Lord, give me the servant's heart that you have, Lord. And if you're going to send me, we pray that they will not only hear the message, but they will see our life following Jesus and God will use that to move other people to accept Him or to believe in Him. So that's what the Lord was doing here. He was now bringing them to this one another relationship. Now, it doesn't actually stop there. Look at verse 12 to 14. Look at the next one another that Jesus teaches here. Jesus, he says, my command is this. Okay? Kanina, example. Okay? Subong, it's a command. Notice that? My command is this. Love each other as I have loved. You. Do you notice the similarities? Kanina hambal ni Lord sa earlier verses. If I washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. So in other words, based siya sa iyanga ginhimo sa aton. Right? So as I have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. Now look what Jesus is saying here. Love one another. How? As I have loved you, Jesus said. Love one another. So notice what the Lord was doing. He was about to leave. He was about to leave his disciples. Physically, madula si Lord. Ang mal niya kinaglan. Ang one another, alagaan niyo. Wash one another's feet. Diba? And love one another as I have loved you. Remember what Jesus said in verse 1, brethren, because again, when it comes to love, it is based on our relationship with Jesus, how much we know Him. Again, look at verse 1. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for Him to leave this world and go to the Father. Now look at the last line. Having loved His own who were in the world, He now showed them the full extent of His love. Okay? He now showed them the full extent of His love. When was this full extent of love going to be shown? It was in the cross. Brethren, I will love you. Ang ibang versions, ang nakasulat, He showed them His love to the end. Okay? Asta sa katapusan sa iyang kabuhi, pinakita niya ang love niya sa ibang. Look at verse 31. This is connected to what we read a while ago sa verse 34. Because Jesus said, when He was gone, Jesus said, now, is the Son of Man glorified and God is glorified in Him. Because when Judas left, that was now the turning point. He was now going to the chief priests to have Him captured. So, Abani Jesus, now is the Son of Man glorified. If God is glorified in Him, God will glorify the Son in Himself. When is God glorified, brethren? When is Jesus glorified? Jesus is glorified in His death. When He showed us the full extent of His love. Diba? Amen? And that's why the Bible always tell you, supposed to be, we should not be asking anymore, Lord, do you love me? Because if you believe He died for your sins, He has shown the full extent of His love. Do not base your life and circumstances to judge the Lord's love. Hindi. Balik ka sa cross. That was the full extent of His love. 
no matter what is happening to you today, Jesus has shown His love for us up to the end. Okay? Amen? That's why hindi na dapat talaga pabakotin. Lord, mahal mo ba ako? Okay? Hindi. Pinakita na ni Lord eh. Now, look what Jesus says in verse 34. As I have loved you, okay? showing the full extent of His love, loving to the end, so must we love one another. Okay? Maka-amen ba kita? Subong? Okay. How many of us can claim that we show the full extent of our love to one another? How many of us can say that? Okay? How many of you this morning Gasungud ka sa isa ka member sa ato nga church. Uh, don't, don't raise up your hands. Uh, raise up your hand kung gusto niyo mag-counseling, matok ta karon. Okay? But how many of us now? Kung sa Tagalog may tampo ka, gasungud ka sa isa ka member sa church or iban nga believer. Okay? Galav ka pero hindi full extent. That's it. You know what Jesus was leaving with us? Again, are just like washing of feet. When we follow Jesus, we become a reflection of the life of Jesus. When we love, we're supposed to be a reflection of the love of Jesus. But brethren, you can never love one another unless you recognize how much God loved you. And the only way you will understand how much God loved you is if you admit that before God, you were unlovable. You were a sinner. You were an object of wrath. And yet, God loved me. Diba? Amen? Yeah. Now, what about this other person na nagasunggod ka? Na may ginihim mo siya sa imo. Nagsala siya sa imo. Pilaka beses. Okay? You know what Jesus is saying? Love one another as I have loved you. Love them to the end. Love them to the full extent. That's what Jesus is saying. How many of us? You see, we fool ourselves, brethren, when we try to love without recognizing who Jesus is. Without believing in who He is, brethren. But this was the one another that Jesus was asking His people. Okay? That we love according to how Jesus loved us. It is impossible for us to love unless we have believed in how much Jesus has loved us. Okay? Kasi the reason na nagasunggod kita, or may aratawo na hindi nato ma-forgive, you know why? It's because we put so much premium on ourselves. We are so important that when someone hurts me, he does not deserve my love. Diba? Amen? Oh, wala nag amen Hindi, oh, hindi, hindi na amen no? Yes? Kasi pag amen, spiritual, no? Oh, di ba? Tuod na. Pag may nag sa aton, wag nga, mal, wag nga i-love ko siya. He does not deserve my love. Why? Because I am important. No, di ba? Pag nagkasunggod ta, okay? o oh, nga, ma-reconcile ma, ma, ko sa iya. Hindi, siya dapat. Di ba? It doesn't the Bible say that even while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Can you imagine if Jesus waited for each one of us <laughs> to be the first one to make a step? None of us would be saved. You know why? Because we are all self-centered. So when Jesus says, love each other as I have loved you, okay, he was basing it 
on how much we know about Jesus. And basically, brethren, the reason why we don't know how to love is because we don't know our God. We don't know our Lord. And that's why we can't live as He lives. We cannot. Okay? A new command I give you, Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Verse 35, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You know what this means, brethren? This is not talking about, I, they will know by the act of love. Hindi. They will know we are disciples. Why? Because we're following Him. We're obeying Him. It's not just about love and you know, holding hands and and no, it's about my obedience, my desire to follow the one who loved me. I wash other people's feet because he washed my feet. I love because he loved. You see? And that's why that's how people will know that we are his disciples. Who is a disciple? A disciple is someone who loves uh, who who follows Jesus, who learns from Jesus. So when people see, when the world see our love for one another, okay. kaya nga nakakahiya ang kwan eh, ang nagagawa sa news na may hindi makasulod sa isa kasimbahan, kaaway sila sa church, what is that telling the world? Diba? What's that telling the world? Well, eh, they're not disciples because they're not following the Lord. Okay? Disciples wash one another's feet. Okay? Disciples don't insist that you wash my feet. No, no, no. I will wash your feet. Okay? See? And it's not just about humility. It's not just about servanthood. Eh. What is it about? Lord, ikaw ginwash mo ako ng feet. Eh. And now you wash me to, want me to wash one another's feet. It's the same with love. Lord, why will I love? I love, Lord, because you loved me. And because you loved me, you want me to love one another as you have loved me. See? Look at John chapter 15. Verse 12 to 14. You see, we need to ask ourselves really this morning, brethren. Am I really following Jesus? Am I really living as Jesus wants me to live? John 15 verse 12. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Look at verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. Verse 14, you are my friends if you do what I command. Okay? Did Jesus lay down his life for us? Okay. Yes? Amen? Yes. Were we deserving? No. So the person that you are ano bang so good sa English? that you are so good with, <laughs> okay. that you are hurt, you are hurt by him or her, they're not deserving. Diba? They're not deserving. The person who sinned against you, they're not deserving. But how did Jesus love you? <laughs> we need to ask ourselves, say, Lord, am I following you? Of course, the, the, the real question is, do I know you, Lord? Do I really know how sinful and undeserving I was for you to still die for me and forgive me of my sins? Diba? That's the first question. Eh? Because apart from that recognition, brethren, we cannot look at others and say, Lord, I want to love 
with your love. You see? So again, are we, re are we really following the Lord? Are we really walking with Him? We have to check it. That's why this, this whole gospel is about belief. Eh? Do I really believe in Him? And do, am I really following Him as the Lord wants me to follow Him? Verse 30, balik tasa 13, no? verse 35, by this all men will know that you are my disciples, that you are the, the people who follow me, the people who listen to me, the people who have believed in me. That's how they will know, not by doctrine, not by church membership, not by uh, defending your faith. No. They will know you are a disciple if you follow Jesus. If you listen to his teachings and you follow him. This is what Jesus left his disciples as they lived with one another. Okay? If we look to him as Lord and Master, if we listen to his words and obey and follow him, then the world will know that we are his disciples, brethren. Keep that word in mind, brethren. Disciples. Kasi subong, ang Christian, barato na lang eh. Pwede mo lang ibalik yan. Discansin o Christian subong eh. Diba? Pero ang disciple la in. What is a disciple? A disciple is someone who has heard, he has listened to the word of the Lord, he believes in who Jesus is, and he follows him. Even if no one is watching. Even if no one is checking, it's about us and God. So notice what the Lord was leaving one another. Pero siyempre may arapata chapter 14, 15, 16, amo na ang full-blown teaching ni Lord while they were having that meal. So we have so many other details and we're approaching that. Okay? But at least here, Jesus showed us, wash one another's feet. Love one one another as I have loved you wash one another's feet as I have washed your feet one another okay Jesus said take care of each other that's what the church is brethren okay that's what the church is okay? let's pray how the Lord will show that to us diba? show how we can be part of one another now, brethren, woven in this story of washing one another and loving one another is what? In John 13. It's the betrayal of Judas. Right? Chapter 13, to be honest, was one of the hardest preparations for me because you notice how John would mix up the, the details. He'll talk about the love of Jesus and the extent of his love. Then he'll talk about Judas uh, already being prompted by the devil. Then he will show the washing of feet. And then John will show that Jesus knew who was going to betray him. And then later on, the story of betrayal, gin pakita gin the Lord. So Lord, I was really wondering, Lord, what are you trying to show us here? What are you trying to teach us here? Why is Judas part of the story? Because he should not, diba? If someone betrays, no? if someone betrays, you, you want to push them out. No? Grab again. You know, I, I, uh, I belong to this group um, many pounds ago, many years ago, I was in martial arts, diba? And we had this uh, group of black belters. We began this association and we were very strong. Not as ang, 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 ang instructor namon na Korean was, was the head and everything and so he took care of us. One day, one of them, one of us, betrayed that, the Korean teacher, went against him. And you know what happened? We have all of these pictures okay, of this group. You know what? Gina-erase nila ang, ang guya. Sang sininga. Kwan? Sa sining tao, mas masakit sa iban sa amon kay upod damon siya sa una. Okay? Pero tungod sa iya nga betrayal, quote and quote, gina-erase nila. 
Ang guya niya sa tanan ng pictures, do hindi na siya part. Grabe, no? That's what should have happened to Judas. Judas betrayed the Son of God. Why is it in all the Gospels they talk about Judas? Okay? Interesting. The betrayal of Jesus, brethren, was a pivotal point in Jesus' death. When the betrayal happened, it showed that it was already going to happen. Amo na ang, ang pivotal point. Okay? The painful thing was it was going to be done by someone who was one of the twelve. Gabi, no? Amo na ang masakit. Hindi sundalo, hindi Pharisee, hindi teacher of the law, hindi normal lang ang Jew na nagasingkit na sa crowd. It was one of the twelve whom Jesus walked with for three years and loved. He was going to be the one to betray Jesus. And that's what makes it painful. Diba? Kasi, upod the Lord. Now, the first thing that entered my mind was this. What was John's intent again in writing this gospel? His intent was that we would believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that we may have life and that we will follow Him. Okay? So that's what, what was his intent. So why would John include this? How does this help our belief in Jesus? And how does this help in the life and following of Jesus that we're supposed to have? Why include this? Okay? How does John show that Jesus is God by this betrayal. Okay? How did Jesus show? I think that's the better question. How did Jesus show that he was God to his apostles by this betrayal? Now look, turn with me to verse 18. So when talking about being a servant, being a messenger, diba? being sent, etc., Jesus now tells them, I am not referring to all of you, he tells them. Okay? I know those I have chosen. Okay? Now, Jesus said this earlier in verse 11. Diba? Or John, I'm sorry. John wrote about this earlier. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said, not everyone was clean. Okay, so Jesus already knew. Go on, yun, Jesus was not surprised when Judas betrayed him. Okay, he was not. He already knew. Again, I, I think I mentioned this last Sunday. From chapter 1, amo na ang pinapakita ni Lord sa ato eh. He knew Peter. He knew Nathaniel. He knew the Samaritan woman. Diba? He knows who his chosen ones are. He knows who his disciples are. And he also knows those who are not. In fact, when Jesus said, I know those I have chosen, diba si Judas, chosen man? Chosen at least to be part of the twelve, not chosen to be a Christian. Judas did not volunteer to join the apostles. Okay? Jesus, uh, Judas did not have to give a biodata para mapag-aralan ni Lord tapos batunon siya. No, Jesus chose Judas to be one of the twelve. But this is one way. It's obvious here that John is showing us in chapter 13 that Jesus knew. Ang mga disciples, wala sila idea. Diba? Wala sila idea sa natabo. But if you read John 13, you will notice that John is always saying the devil had prompted Judas to betray and Jesus knew that not everyone was clean. He's writing this from hindsight. He's writing this 
now realizing kung sino si Judas. And John is writing it in a way by saying, you know what? Jesus was not surprised. He knew that he was going to betray, be betrayed. He knew those that he had chosen. Okay? But it was more than that. Brethren, hambal niya sa verse 18, but this is to fulfill what? The scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. I know whom I have chosen. I know I chose Judas to be part of the twelve. But this was fulfillment of scripture. Betrayal was fulfillment of scripture, brethren. Jesus did not invent it. It did not happen by chance. Scripture tells us that the Messiah had to be betrayed. Amo na ang pagkot niya. Oh. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. Okay? Where do we find that? Do you have a note? in your Bibles. But that's one of the reasons why um, tawag diri, na you also need to look at the um, notes. Na? You find that in Psalm 41 verse 9. Okay? You notice ang Psalms, brethren, abinaton songs lang siya. Pero hindi, kadamo sa mga prophecy. Kadamo sa mga prediction sa Psalms. Parti sa Messiah. In Psalm 41 verse 9, even my close friend whom I trusted, he who shared my bread has lifted up his heel against me. Sino ang writer ng Psalm 41? Si David. Did this happen to David? Yes, that's why he was writing about it. But little did he know that he was writing about the Messiah also. That the Messiah was going to be betrayed by someone who was a close friend. Brethren, Jesus washed the feet of Judas. Amen? Judas was with Jesus for three years. John 13 verse 1 says, after, now that he showed his love, dalada si Judas. Even my close friend whom I trusted who shared my bread amuna ang actually hindi lang sa last supper but for so for 3 years Judas shared bread with Jesus okay Judas looked like a disciple okay amon ang delikado brethren nang itsura mo <laughs> the disciple okay that's why Christianity is not about externals. Okay? Judas was part of all these things, brethren. Okay? This was a fulfillment of Scripture. The whole life of Jesus, brethren, everything he was doing was a fulfillment of Scripture. And this is one of the things that, so, that is supposed to help our belief. Okay? And this is why, brethren, I, 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 I'll keep on saying this with the hope and with the prayer that the Holy Spirit prompts your heart. Pero amo na importante nga, number one, na nagabasa kita Bible, Scripture. Because it's scripture that reveals who God is. Number two, okay, important in Bible study. Okay? You cannot just claim you're a Christian kasi nag-receive ka, tapos Christian ka na, tapos wala kang growth sa scripture, wala kang personal seeking of scripture where God reveals who He is, walang study of scripture with other brethren, wala brethren, you cannot. Okay? You cannot because it's scripture that reveals who God is. It is scripture that cements our belief in who He is. See? It's scripture. Not human teaching, not emotion, not church membership. Hindi. It's scripture. 
So why are we neglecting it so much? Why are we not? Christianity is not about do not smoke, do not drink, do not lie. No, Christianity is about Lord, I know you. You are my God. You died for me. You were sent by the Father. And here we have Jesus talking about one another. You notice the epistles, brethren, talk so much about how we are to live with one another because it continues the teaching of Jesus that we're supposed to be living together with one another as the body of Christ. But that's what Scripture shows us. It's not supposed to be the church that forces you to fellowship. It's not supposed to be the church that forces you to grow. No, we're just here serving one another. Ang kada isa sa aton may role. Ang scripture, ang ginoo mismo, ang Holy Spirit na ginoo sa ang scripture, amo na ang nagpapakilala sa aton sa Diyos. Yan. See? That's why scripture is essential. And that's what John is showing us here. Di ba? He's the only one who records this. That this fulfills scripture. He who shares my bread has lifted up his heel against me. Later on, after Jesus' death and resurrections, the disciples would realize, Hala! Part galis ang, ano ang betrayal? And that's why John and the other Gospels, they record it. That Judas went to the Pharisees or the chief priests and asked how he could betray him, received 70 coins, no? and then the Last Supper, how Judas was, how betrayed him, etc., and then in the Garden of Gethsemane, they, they, they gave each other a kiss, and that was the sign to capture Jesus. Then the disciples realized, Hala, tuod, no? Ang tanan na ginambal sa scripture, pati sa Messiah, nakita namon kay Jesus. I believe. Wow, brethren, that's what should make you believe. Not a statement of faith of a church. Not the preaching of a pastor. It's scripture, brethren. That's what tells what you believe. Diba? That's what tells what we believe. And then look at verse 19. Look what Jesus says. I am telling you now, before it happens, so that when it does happen, what? You will believe that I am He. See? You notice how Jesus just kept on showing them, teaching them, so that they would believe. In chapter 1, you see Andrew and Peter and Philip and Nathaniel. Sa chapter 1 ba, nagbelieve na sila? Yes. Di ba? But for the rest of the three years they were with Jesus, Jesus just kept on teaching them and showing them, strengthening that belief. Brethren, belief is not, I believe Jesus died for me, I, I received him. And, no, it's about growing in Jesus. The more you grow in Jesus, the more you will believe. Jesus did it with his disciples, brethren. Sa ambal niya, I'm telling you in advance about my betrayal so that when it does happen, you will believe. How? By my telling you that it would happen. Again, what is that? The words of Jesus. You notice? You believe my words. You believe what I said. Again, brethren, notice how important is it that we grow in the Word. Diba? That we grow in Scripture. And not just knowledge. Knowing our God more. Diba amo nang habal ni Lord? This, uh, we're going to see it later in, I think it's chapter 15, where Jesus said, this is eternal life, that they know you, the one who sent me. And, I'm uh, no, sorry, they know me and the one who sent me. That's eternal life. Eternal life is not nag sinner's prayer ako. Eternal life is, I know who my God is. I know why He sent Jesus. And it doesn't stop there. I keep on growing and learning according to the words of the Lord. Diba? That's why sa tuod lang, brethren, 
hindi dapat hapos sa aton maghambal na Christian kita. Eh. Hindi. We should be testing ourselves. Eh. Lang, Christian ba ako? Hindi. If you're still depending on a sinner's prayer, brethren, medyo delikado. Okay? Intensity 7 na uh, earthquake. Kinanglan stable ang inyong faith, eh. ang inyong belief. Eh. Where does that come from? From Scripture. See? It comes from Scripture. And as imperfect as we are, that's what we try to do with the men's fellowship, with the women's fellowship, even with the youth, even with the seniors. We, we trust the Lord to bring His Word in our fellowships. Okay? So that so that we can grow in our knowledge of Him until He returns. And that's why we go out to have coffee with one another. It's not to talk about politics or talk about the vaccine or to talk about whatever else is happening. It's supposed to talk about the Lord. Amon ang communion eh. See? We break bread to talk about the Lord and grow more in our understanding of Him. That's how disciples grow. That's how our belief is cemented, brethren. Okay? Jesus was going to be betrayed by someone who was a close friend, as Psalm 41 tells us, who shared his bread with him. Brethren, Judas was with Jesus for three years. He heard his teachings. He saw the signs. He saw how people believed. He even experienced the power of the Spirit. Do you know that? He experienced it. It doesn't mean he had the Spirit. Turn with me to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 70 to 20. In Luke chapter 10, this is where the Lord sends out 72. And tanan niya disciples during that time. He sends them out. And Judas is part of that. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Valdina excited sila. Okay? So he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Look at verse 20. However, yeah, and oops, the Lord says, however, do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. It's not about power, casting out demons, healing of sick, etc. No. Ano ang joy sang isa ka disciple? It's knowing that our names are written in heaven. How will I know that? By knowing who Jesus is and who sent him and why he came, why he had to die. That's how my heart is assured that my name is in heaven, brethren. But Judas had no part in that. Okay? Brethren, Jesus... Uh, Judas had no part. Look at let's go let's go back to John chapter twelve, verse four to six. When when Mary poured perfume on Jesus, okay, Judas complained in verse four, John twelve. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. Now look what John says. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, <laughs> but because he was a thief. He was with Jesus for so many years and he still was a thief. As keeper of the money bag, that means there were some who actually gave love offerings siguro to Jesus and to the disciples. Timing si Judas pa, ang keeper ng money bag. John says, 
he used to help himself to what was put into it. See? That's Judas. He had all the externals, brethren. He had all the externals. Okay. But he did not know who Jesus was. Okay. Enough to want to betray him for how many coins was that? 30? 30 silver coins. That was Judas, brethren. In fact, balik nata sa John 13, look what, look what happens with Judas here, brethren. I, I tell you, I, John is still showing us, the gospel of John is still showing us belief and disbelief here. Huh? Look, look at this. So let's start from verse 21. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. So wala sila idea, brethren, no? One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. So leading back against Jesus, he asked him, this is supposedly John, eh, no? He asked him, Lord, who is it? Okay? Now, nagsabat si Lord. Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. All of this was public, brethren. Eh? Everyone is talking. Lord, Jesus says, Someone here, 12 lang sila. 12 lang sila kabilog. 13, upod si Lord. One of you here is going to betray me. Who is it, Lord? And I don't know how Judas responded, pero si, I, I don't know kung nag-acting man siya. Ala, who is it? Who is it? Pero di ba, kabalon, kabalon na si Judas eh. And when Jesus dips the bread and gives it to Judas, look what it says, verse 27, as soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. Now, brethren, look what happens. Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. Okay. You know what, brethren? This was Jesus talking to him. Okay. And yet, without any hesitation, Without any conviction. Verse 30. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out. This can nagambar si Lord. What you are about to do, do it quickly. Now, Jesus was not commanding him. Okay? Basi abid yo, oh, gin command di Lord. No, Jesus was not commanding him. You know what Jesus was saying? I know what you're going to do. So go and do it. Si Judas, bungol eh. Ginkuha niyang bread, tindog siya, gwa siya. No conviction, no hesitation. Why? Because he does not know who Jesus is. He does not know, brethren. Now look at the contrast. What were the words of Jesus to his disciples? If I wash your feet, tamahin niya, you should wash one another's feet. If I am your Lord, di ba? Be an example. Tapos, hambal niya, after this, actually, hambal niya, love one another as I have loved you. Pero ang word niya kay Judas, Judas, himoon mo na. Ang gusto mo, himoon. Okay? He was, if I will follow the words of Romans chapter 1, do you know what Jesus was doing? He handed him over to his depravity. Okay. You've been with me for three years. You've never heard. Okay. You don't believe in me. So ang gida plano mo, himoon mo na. It's all part of scripture. Oh. Okay. You see, brethren, if you're a disciple, and Jesus says, I know what you're going to do. <laughs> or, di ba? Lord, because Jesus knows we're going to sin even before we sin, di ba? But 
But the word of Jesus is different. Eh? When Jesus tells us, anak, I know what you're going to, Lord, help me, Lord, I don't want to do it, Lord, di ba? I don't want, Lord. Si Judas, wala pakialam eh. What you're going to do, do it. Okay, goodbye. Lakad siya. <laughs> Grabe, na? Right in the middle of the Last Supper, you see belief, you see unbelief, you see disciples, but you see, un and, and I don't know if this is the very last, for 12 chapters, you see Jesus talking to the chief priests, the Pharisees, the Jews who were following him for bread, the Jews who were following him for miracles, but now you see Jesus dealing with someone who was part of his inner circle. Grabe, no? Wow, that's Judas, brethren. No hesitation. Again, do you see the contrast, brethren? The disciples had as their foundation their relationship with Jesus. Judas did not. He had no relationship with Jesus. To the disciples, the words of Jesus were words of life. Iba? Follow me. Wash one another's feet. Love one another. But to Judas, the words of Jesus were what? They were words of judgment. You read that in chapter 1 of Romans, brethren. Because of the unbelief and rebellion of people, God you, you wonder why people continually sin and do crazy things in this life? God has given them over to their depravity. Okay? What you're going to do, do it. And they just do it. Wow. Rabe, no? To Judas, the words of the Lord meant nothing except judgment. Even death. To a disciple, the words of Jesus are the words of life. The disciples lived according to the example and love of Jesus. Judas lived for himself. Judas lived for himself. Okay? And after this, as the events come approaching the death of Jesus, now that Judas has left, Jesus, Jesus now focuses on his disciples. So when you read John 14, all the way up to verse 17, brethren, that those four chapters are limited to his disciples only. They are not teachings for the world. They're teaching for his disciples. Okay? Wala na si Judas eh. Diba? And you know what? struck my heart or my mind when I was preparing this. We make fun of Judas, diba? God knows who does not pay. You know what I realized? Judas is not something to make fun of. <laughs> it's not. Diba? Because judgment had come upon him so grab it. Um, Ang natabokay Judas. Turn with me to Luke chapter twenty-two. Verse twenty-one. Again, the context here is in that same time. No? But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed okay, by someone betraying him. But woe to that man who betrays him. Woe to that man. I think it was a few Sundays ago, brethren, when I said 
We should not take this belief lightly, brethren. Diba? Whether we're dealing with ourselves and asking, Lord, tuod ba ako nga believer? Diba? See, if you're asking yourself that question, Lord, why do I still hate this person? Why can I not forgive? Why am I not loving to the extent, to the full? If you, if you come to a point this morning where you're saying, Lord, ba si, ba si hindi pa ako believer? You know what I say? Praise God for that. You know why? Because you're not like Judas. Judas heard Jesus speak, just turned around and said, Bye. Ang 30 silver coins ko, gaulat. <laughs> Di ba? See? But if you're that this morning, we should not take this belief lightly. Whether we're checking ourselves or we're concerned about our family members or our friends, brethren, Lord. Di ba? The, the more we should be praying, Lord, by your grace. Right? By your grace. True believers are those who have recognized who Jesus is, what he did for them. Their foundation is their relationship with Jesus. They recognize how he, God's servant, brought salvation. They recognize how Jesus showed the full extent of his love for them. And they follow and obey. Amen. They follow and obey. Unbelievers do not recognize Jesus. They've never experienced his servanthood and love. And so they live for themselves. And that's why they live a life of disobedience. Okay. But brethren, what the gospel show us is, especially for us today, it's already happened. Diba? All we have to do is to look back and say, Lord, Thank you for who you are. Save me, Lord. And Lord, I want to follow you. I want to walk as you walked, Lord, by your grace. See? And you know what, brethren? It doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. Okay? But you pray that prayer every day because that's how we get to know who our Lord is and walk with him as his disciples. Okay? Let's pray. Lord, it was a heavy message today because we talked about obeying you. We talked about following you. And Lord, none of us have that capacity. But we thank you that because of who you are and because of what you have done, you have saved us and given us, Lord, the ability because of who you are to walk with you. We, you graciously moved in our hearts and life. But you've also shown us Judas, Lord. Someone who looked like a disciple, but he was not. Lord, we pray that we open our hearts to you. If we believe that we have been Christian for so long, Father, we bow down and Lord, we realize it's not about us, it's about you. It's about who you are. Lord, we want to know you more. We want scripture to speak to us. We want you to reveal yourself to us each and every day. Lord, we pray for your grace upon us. Salamat, Gino. Lord, we thank you. We trust in you completely for everything. As we go and as we live, we live with the trust that you are always with us, that your protection is always with us, and that you are there for, for us to continually grow and walk with you, Lord. Salamat, Gino. We entrust ourselves to you. As always, all glory, honor, and praise belong to you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Let's bless the Lord, brethren. Let's clap and thank Him.